Lisa Tucker Gray. My pronouns are she and her, and we are Trinity Episcopal Church, a progressive, inclusive, creative community of faith whose building is located in downtown Toledo, Ohio. But now with this sacred digital space, our membership and participation are worldwide. Wherever you find yourself on your spiritual journey today, know that you are welcome and wanted here. So now open your heart and prepare to receive the love that God has for you today. Welcome home. Blessed are they, the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they, full of sorrow, they shall be consoled. Rejoice and be glad, blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad, yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they, the lonely ones, they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they who hunger shall have their fill. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who show mercy. Mercy shall be the pure of heart, they shall see God. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they who seek peace. They are the children Suffer in faith, the glory of God is theirs. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who suffer hate all because. be glad. Yours is the kingdom. Shine for all to see. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you. Holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom of God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heaven on earth, look to me and see. Watch me enliven all of creation. My love, my grace, received with every in-breath, exchanged through each exhale. I am the God of Moses, extended an invitation to meet human feet upon high holy places where heaven met earth. I called him out to walk with me, talk. Climb mountains, not only to find me somewhere, not to prove my exclusivity or supernatural divinity. I am with nothing to prove.
I wish you could have seen his face, the glory of God upon him, transmitting light from me to Moses, to others, outreach to the people. But they were transfixed, people straining from twinkles of light, residue rather than coming to the source, distanced from me and my nature. Not realizing, I come to be close. for you to know me and gain my heart, no longer the hard-to-grasp mountaintop God that only appreciates accomplishment. I am when you lose footing and slide. I am when you encounter the wild and hide. I am when you lose faith. When you are dried up and blistered by wind and sun, I am with you long before summit, informing you I just keep talking about radical, inclusive love. As you come to know me for who I am, my presence becomes your countenance. You arrive at the mountaintop, are gifted the big reveal. I was in you all along. I was in you all along. You reside in me. This is the insight that brings unity, empathy for your sister, oneness with your brother. My people, discover me in one another and be transfigured. Thin places, consecrated ground. Heaven on earth. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. There are moments in our lives that we might call transfigurations or mountaintop experiences like the one described in today's gospel where Jesus takes his friends up the mountain. It was there that they witnessed the indescribable. Jesus was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. It sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. 
and listening to it read, you might need a healthy dose of willful suspension of disbelief. How must Peter, James, and John have felt? The gospel said they were overcome by fear. I don't know about you, but this seems like a bit of an understatement. Imagine this happening to you. How would you feel? Would you take out your phone and snap a picture and share it to Instagram? I know that I probably would. I think the mistake that many of us make is that we almost always think of the mountaintop experience as a big, bold, spectacular moment. But I think many of us have small moments that can be life-changing. I am reminded of Thomas Merton's Fourth and Walnut experience. I've used this example in a previous reflection, but I think it bears repeating today when responding to Matthew's Gospel. He describes his experience in his work, Conjectures of a Guilty Bystander. Merton writes, In Louisville, at the corner of Fourth and Walnut, in the center of the shopping district, I was suddenly overwhelmed with the realization that I loved all these people, that they were mine and I theirs, that we could not be alien to one another, even though we were total strangers. It was like waking from a dream of separateness, of spurious self-isolation in a special world, the world of renunciation and supposed holiness. This whole illusion of separate holy existence is a dream. Not that I question the reality of my vocation or of my monastic life, but the conception of the separation from the world that we have in the monastery too easily presents itself as a complete illusion. The illusion that by making vows, we become a different species of being, pseudo angels, spiritual men, men of interior life what have you. Certainly these traditional values are very real, Merton writes, but their reality is not of an outside order, everyday existence in a contingent world, nor does it entitle one to despair, despise the secular, though out of the world we are in the same world as everybody else, the world of the bomb, the world of race hatred, the world of technology, the world of mass media, big business, revolution, and all the rest. We take a different attitude to all these things, for we belong to God. Yet so does everybody else belong to God. We just happen to be conscious of it and make a profession out of this consciousness. But does that entitle us to consider ourselves different or even better than others? <laughs> the whole idea is preposterous. The sense of liberation from an illusory difference was such a relief and joy to me that I almost laughed out loud. And I suppose my happiness could be taken form in the words, thank God, thank God that I am like other men, that I am only a man among others. To think that for 16 or 17 years, I have been taken seriously this pure illusion that is implicit so much of being a monk and of monastic thinking. Merton goes on to write, it is a glorious destiny to be a member of the human race, though it is a race dedicated to many absurdities and one which makes many terrible mistakes. Yet with all that, God himself glorified in becoming a member of the human race, a member of the human race. To think that such a commonplace realization should suddenly seem like news that one holds the winning ticket in a cosmic sweepstakes. Just picture it. Merton is simply walking down a busy street and has a revelation that completely changes his ministry and writing forever. A small moment in time changed everything for him. Merton's experience is a reminder that not all mountaintop experiences are big, explosive events, but rather can happen in seemingly mundane, everyday events. What is your mountaintop experience? Have you ever had an experience in your life that is so glorious, so life-changing, you didn't want it to end? These experiences are often short-lived, a beautiful symphony or ballet, the feeling of connection with a friend, the joy of falling in love, an exceptionally sumptuous meal at your favorite restaurant, a fantastical dream from which you wake up, a sudden rush of strength during a time of struggle, 
quiet moment while holding the hand of a loved one as they pass from their earthly realm to their heavenly one. Or during a walk on a beach as you hear the waves crashing on the shore. A time when you feel a deep sense of inner peace. You are at once connected with God, with yourself, and with God's creation. Then just as suddenly as the experience comes, it disappears. You try hard to bring it back, to hold on to it once again, to possess it, to, and try as you might, you cannot cling to it, you cannot possess it. It evaporates, slips away out of our grasp, and before you know it, it's gone. Just as suddenly as it appeared, you are back to your everyday life, back to your overconnected lives of emails, social media, 24-hour news, and workday doldrums. Many of you know that I work as a substance abuse group facilitator at a treatment center. One of the things that I often tell my clients is to slow down. Try not to rush the process. I offer the same advice to you. Slow down. Slow down so you don't hurry past the everyday moments that might be life-changing the seemingly insignificant moments that might actually be mountaintop experiences in disguise. Episcopal priest, theologian, and teacher, Father Raymond LaFontaine describes it as this. In our overfull, too busy lives, these moments often seem few and bar far between. We get so busy, so preoccupied by our concerns and projects that we fail to see them. Sometimes we give up looking for them Stop believing that they are possible, and we lose that last and most precious gift of the Holy Spirit, our sense of wonder and awe, our ability to see the glory of God in the midst of the hustle and bustle of our busy lives. When we practice mindfulness and stay connected to the present, I believe we can linger in these glorious moments when they do occur. I'm sure I'm not the only one, but I call these moments holy moments of now. When we live mindfully, we don't miss the small, life-altering moments. Elsewhere in the Gospel, Christ tells us to stay awake. It is important to stay ready and open for life-changing experiences, both big and small, our own mountaintop experiences. But many of us might feel like Peter and want to pitch a tent on our mountain and stay the night or perhaps longer. But the lessons that we learn in the mountain are meant to be shared. These moments can take on a new life when we take what we have learned on our mountain and give it freely to others, especially to those in need, in need of a hug, in need of a hand to hold, a hand up, a shoulder to cry on. Jesus doesn't tell his disciples to never share their experience. He simply asks them to wait, to share it until after he has risen. We are not called to pitch a tent on the mountain and camp there, hoarding our newfound treasure, our newfound knowledge. We can't live on the mountain forever, but we can keep our mountain experience alive by sharing it, just as Matthew shares the story of the transfiguration. In her wonderful essay, Ministry to a Wounded World, Benedictine sister Joan Chittister shares of the significance of Jesus' transfiguration. She writes, Of course, the call to Christian ministry presupposes a long journey up a mountain to find God. But it also means that we cannot build a spiritual life and expect to stay on top of our pious and antiseptic little mountains. The call of the spiritual life, the call of ministry, is a call to take all the insights into Christ and his life that we have gained in our own private little mountains to the grasping, groaning world of our own time with a deeper awareness of the root causes of its suffering, its demons. What does it mean to minister today? On new mountaintops, a new millennium, a new moment in history, it means awareness, authenticity, and transfiguration. It means being willing to be transformed so that the world may be transformed into the image of Jesus, the liberator. Chit is to remind us that Christ goes off to a lonely place, a mountaintop, to be quiet, to be
be still, to discern, to reconnect with his Father and know God's will for him. But Christ doesn't stay on the mountain. He comes down and 40 days later is faced with the cross. I believe we are all called to climb our own personal mountain, to find God's will for us during our busy lives. But the old ad, like the old adage, what goes up must come down. The stone tablets that Moses brought down from the mountain were meant to be shared. Jesus' Sermon on the Mount was a message to be shared to many. We are called to come down from the mountain and share what it means to be truly human in a world that can often feel inhumane. In his famous I Have a Dream speech, Martin Luther King proclaimed, I have been to the mountaintop and I've seen the glory. Father Raymond LaFontaine writes, for Dr. King, the mountain was not a nice, safe refuge from the pain and strife of a messy, often unjust world, the dream that was not a fantasy world into which he escaped, but a profound belief that the universal brotherhood from which he had prayed and worked for so long one day would be a reality in God's time, if not in his own. King knew that coming down from the mountain was risky, but it was a risk that he was willing to take to make his dream a reality. Coming down from our mountains and doing the hard work can be unfamiliar and frightening, even dangerous, but the risk is worth the reward. We will soon begin our journey through Lent, and we too are called to go up to the mountaintop with God to embrace all that it means to be human, including our suffering, our joy, to see his glory and share it with our friends, neighbors, and even strangers. Some of you might think, hear this and think, wow, this sounds like evangelism. Yes, it is, but I am reminded that in a program of recovery that I follow, one of the traditions says our public relations policy is based on attraction rather than promotion. Living a life of kindness and gratitude is an act of evangelism. Let us climb the mountain together, hand in hand, so that we might be enlightened and transformed, so that we can become instruments of that transformation and enlightenment to our siblings in need. Let us bring what we learn down from the mountain and share it freely. Remember to slow down, and may you never forget that you are beautiful, worthy, loved, and enough. An affirmation of faith from the New Zealand Prayer Book. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, our Holy Spirit, you empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. Spirit of Fire Inflame in us a passion for justice and equality, that we may know the cleansing of our prejudices and fears and proclaim your freedom, boldly caressing your earth with humility. Hear our prayers for freedom and justice for all. Spirit of compassion, infuse in us with your longings for wholeness and deep joy that we may reach out to those who are hurting and alienated and folding one another with your love and tenderness. Hear our prayers for healing and wholeness. Spirit of wisdom, be with us in our journeying, gently guiding us along life's giving paths, that we may be led towards transformation and new beginnings in our world. Hear our prayers for courage to begin again. Spirit of gentleness, touch us anew, releasing in us all that we are afraid of in this uncertain time. 
that we may know your acceptance of us and freely accept the embrace of others. Hear our prayers for peace and acceptance. Spirit of power, hold us in our powerlessness that we may know your strength and become a voice for the voiceless, healing for the wounded and empowerment for the weak and lost and confused. Hear our prayers for mercy and grace. Spirit of judgment, be tender with us and show us your mercy that we may humbly learn of you and not be afraid to be your prophets in this world. Hear our prayers for the gift of witness. Spirit of comfort, draw near to us in all grief, confusion, and pain. In your graciousness, bring hope, consolation, and renewal. That many may look inside and out and discover you in the midst. Hear our prayers for consolation and comfort. Spirit of dance, be our playfulness and source of deep joy, that we may leap and laugh and enter moments of new life as we work to breathe deeply again. Hear our prayers for gifts of life and joy. Give us confidence in life and assurance in death. In God's many names we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore and strengthen us through our savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet those you're worshiping with today with a sign of God's love and peace. And if you're worshiping by yourself, peace to you this day. Let your little light shine.
The Lord's Prayer, version by Stephen Best. Great love, the root and sap of our evolving fullness, nudge us forward in our creative potential so we may flourish for the common good. In each mindful moment, help us recognize that we free ourselves from the ghosts of our past in the release we grant to those who have harmed us. Keep us focused on what is right. Make us thirsty for what is just. For it is love that knows the way, shows the way, becomes the way to fulfillment of our eternal call. Amen. My beloved friends, life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And may the rain fall off your shoulders when you're caught in a storm. When the frost comes a-calling, may it find you safe and warm. May your place be set and may your promises be kept and may you never forget that you are loved and the blessing of god creator redeemer and sustainer descend upon you and saturate your beautiful hearts this day and forevermore amen Sing till the power of the Lord come down. Shout hallelujah, praise their holy name. Sing till the power of the Lord come down. Shout hallelujah, praise their holy name. Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Jesus, Jesus, how I love thee. Shout hallelujah, praise their holy name. Sing till the power of the Lord come down. Shout hallelujah, praise their holy name. Sing till the power of the Lord come down. Shout hallelujah, praise their holy name. Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Jesus, Jesus, how I love thee. Shout Hallelujah, praise their holy name. Sing till the power of the Lord come down. Shout hallelujah, praise their holy name. Sing till the power of the Lord come down. Shout hallelujah, praise their holy name. Praise their holy name, holy Jesus, praise their name, oh, holy 
life-giving God. Yeah. 